In this video, we will begin by understanding what is an artifact in a DevOps environment and how does it integrate with DevOps processes. We will then understand Azure Artifact Service from Azure DevOps Platform and how to create, manage an artifact feed. We will end with understanding various settings related to security, views, permissions, and, and permission management for the feed. As always, all my sessions are practical and you can follow the steps as you watch and learn. Hi guys, welcome back. My name is Chaitanya and you can call me Chai. I have more than a decade and a half of experience with software development as a developer, tech lead, architect, and various other roles around designing and delivering software products. Now with the understanding of the term artifact, let us now look at Azure Artifact Servers from Azure DevOps Platform. Azure Artifact is part of uh, Azure DevOps organization or a project that you want to that you have created. Now, if you're not able to see the artifact uh, artifact uh, services, then it's either en not enabled for your project or you do not have permissions. If you are the project admin, you could go to project settings and, and scroll down to see various services that you can enable disable for a project. So in this case, I have my Azure artifact enabled, so I'm able to access artifacts and manage the same. So now going back to the artifact, uh, the basic information and the getting started uh, on Azure Artifact, you can find in uh, the details on the link, uh, which I have put as a comment. And uh, when it comes to the pricing, uh, you will mainly have to pay for the cost, uh, for the size or the uh, storage that you're going to use. It comes with the two GB of free space. Anything more than that, you'll have to pay for uh, the storage. So with this uh, basic details and uh, you know, Azure Artifact um, enabled, let me go ahead and create a step-by-step uh, -step guide to create a new uh, field and basic settings. Now, uh, in order to create a new field, you will have to specify a name, a unique name, which is uh, unique to your organization. And then you will also have to define the visibility of your feed. So example, if, if your Azure DevOps is linked to the Azure Ready, you can control uh, who can view and manage the packages or download the packages from this feed, only who are part of the Azure AD groups or uh, account. Or you can specify all those who have access to this particular organization or part of the organization can, can uh, view the packages in the feed or if you want to specifically say that uh, or control at a, at, a, at a user level, you can say, I want to give access to specific people yourself so that you can control. So I'm going to select members of the academy, whoever is part of the organization, will be able to see this uh, feed and, and download or view the packages. We'll, we'll, we will cover the upstream sources in our next video. So I'll, for now, I'll say, don't include any packages from standard common uh, public source like NuGet or NPMJS. And the last thing you have to decide uh, while creating a feed is uh, what is the scope of the feed? Uh, do you want it to be at the organization level, which is generally a case when you want to share the code and the libraries across the projects and across the organization, then you will select organization. Uh, but uh, in most cases in a project, the feed will be at a project level so that you can share it across the repositories and the code of that project. I'm going to select project, the recommended option of project level, and then go ahead and create. So once the field is created, right now there's not much and nothing is available because we're not, uh, we're not configured in any upstream and we don't have any feeds, any, any packages. Now, <clears throat> Let's let's now look at what are the settings and, and, and permissions available for you to manage. So clicking on settings from in your, in, here, you can list down all the fields that are currently uh, part of this project or, or where you have access. 
and then once you select a particular field you can go into settings and then uh, the again you have the name of the field that you can anytime go ahead and edit when you edit the name it might break an existing uh, team or group of developers are currently using and then uh, various other settings with respect to uh, how do you manage deleted packages and its version how do you want to share the packages very basic details and how long what are the maximum number of versions that you want to support in a package so you can say i want to have uh, up only last five or last, in this case which i want to say only the last five versions including the latest version to be available for users to download and i want to keep the uh, packages downloaded from third party libraries like npm and nodejs yes, i want to keep it for 24 days uh, right and then similarly uh, with this going to the permissions this is where you will be able to select add user or a group into this and provide them uh, access to your feed now when you providing the access you will one thing you have to select the user and then you have to select the role so right? as the uh, name indicates owner is you, you are making this person the owner of the of the feed and contributor is somebody who can uh, publish the packages and uh, and and view the existing packages collaborator is somebody who could not only publish but he, he or she could go ahead and uh, approve and manage the overall feed and the packages of uh, permissions and uh, delete packages reader is somebody who can just view the packages and download he will not be able to publish new versions to the uh, uh, feed and when it comes to view this is something that you can define based on a project uh, so uh, this basically defines how your packages will move and how you can control uh, uh, the feed access and the packet package access so for example your local could be all the development packages which are currently under development or are part, are part of sprint which you do not want your production code and production packages to uh, pipelines to use you will define you will publish the package as a local view and then pre-release is something that you want yeah, that you, are, you want to test and validate before you release it to the to your end user so uh, why the views are required is views are useful when uh, in in the CI/CD pipelines and also it will help you to approve and manage who can see what uh, which which views and which packages of which view so i'll keep that default and then upstream is where <coughs> we will look into the details in the next video but here you can configure what are the upstreams you want to uh, download and act uh, this feed can act as a mirror for the uh, the third party packages and with this uh, basic settings you could also specify who can create feed these are general settings of the azure artifact me being the admin project admin i can see these settings not everybody will be able to see so with this uh, with this basic details of how to create a feed how to manage settings uh, you you will be able to set up a basic uh, azure artifact feed which for, into which you can then publish packages and download and view the packages we will look into the more details on publishing and downloading the packages in the upcoming videos and uh, i hope you are able to follow the steps and 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 create a feed for yourself and and um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for future videos on azure artifact and various other skills that i that i provide